So today we're going to be putting some Cerakote onto our engine tin for our 911SC engine. Okay, so I'm ready to install my baffles. Uh, the Cerakote that we're using on these is rated at 1800 degrees. So this is one of the reasons why I use this particular one. It's going to give a much longer and harder finish than regular paint. It's really smooth, so oil and grease will not want to stick to it and it's a really good option for preserving these parts. So I've got my head sitting on, always want to leave them loose. You don't want to talk down your heads right now, even though it's easy to access the head nuts. You'll also notice that we used a generous amount of copper grease any seas on the studs. Uh, that's a must do for a number of things. One, it allows for a more consistent torque in that we have lubricated the threads so it doesn't tend to bind our torque wrench is going to be more responsive secondly it helps with corrosion so all of our air guide plates are on uh, you have to put those on before the heads go on beginning with the scs they use this uh, plate on the back here to further help direct air into the cylinders and stop it from trying to escape down past the barrel where there's no cooling fins. So making sure these have uh, all of these spreader bars installed. The early cars just ran two spreader bars. They usually didn't run one in the middle, SCs do. And we're ready to either put the cam box on or spin it over and do the same on the other side, get the heads on on the other side. So the next step is we're going to reassemble our cam boxes on this engine. I have my spray bar. This is the original one. I was able to clean it out and we had a lot of debris in this engine. This is pretty much a must on any engine. Now when you install these you can put them in backwards. There is only one direction they go and work correctly. They can go in two wrong directions. So what we want to make sure is, one, this hole right here needs to face up. And then when we press that in, I want to line it up on this end so the hole in there lines up because our plug has a little tip that stops the spray bar from moving and twisting. The other thing, that we want to make sure, and this is what happens when you put them in upside down, the spray jets are push, uh, pointing at the wrong direction. So we want to make sure that our spray jet is pointing at the rocky. You can see here how this one is way over to the side. Yeah. So that's in the wrong place. So I'm just going to push that out. We want to make sure that it's facing down. line up our pieces. Now we can see this spray jet is pointing directly at the rocker. On the bottom side, which is a lot harder to see, we can see now this one is pointing at the exhaust rocker. Very important that these are lined up in the right place. Also too, it's going to be lubricating the cam bearing. So we want, it's very important. You've got cam bearings down in here. And if you don't get lubrication to those, then that's going to burn up the cam. So really important when that's going back in, that it lines up correctly. It's easy to mess up. So it's one of those things you just got to pay a little extra attention to. Last step is our plugs. Now you can buy these or you can make them. Uh, it just depends on what's going on. On this one, I bought them just because I was feeling a little lazy and they were in stock at my regular supplier. It saved me a little bit of time. I do make them. Sometimes I have to clean the uh, bores right here, in which case it becomes an oversized plug. When I install these, I use only Loctite 574 
uh, never a silicone based or JB weld based or anything but reason being this is anaerobic if any of this is squeezed into the actual oil galley it will dissolve in engine oil big must a lot of people use some funky sealants on these and they have made me more money over the years than any other worn engine I can point to next thing we want to do is set it in the end this is going to be an interference fit now line it up tap that in on the back side where the freeze plug goes it's okay to have it sitting proud slightly so this one i've got it flush on the front side where the gasket goes I will always use a punch and drive it just below the surface because we don't want any risk of this plug holding up the gasket area here and creating a leak. Just installing our air injection. So I've got my cam boxes all assembled and ready to go on. I've got my 574 on this one. Heads I've all cleaned up, nuts and washes are there, got rid of any traces of assembly oils or greases on the actual cylinder head surface. Have my oil pipes, oil return tubes installed, O-rings lubricated just with silicone grease, no sealant required on these, also not a good thing to use sealant on them. And we are ready to drop on that cam box. Okay, so my cam box is sitting on, my next step is I'm going to start tightening down all my bolts and I tighten all of the cam box bolts before we go in and do our cylinder head bolts. Now normally I like to tighten these in a crisscross so I'll start in the center and work my way back out. That way I can make sure that the heads pull up evenly. You could also divide it into just one cylinder head because the head nuts are loose they will allow those cylinder heads to move and locate in the cam box, and this is why we leave the cylinder head nuts loose during this operation. So we have a new set of camshafts for this engine because of the oil condition. Our original cams had a lot of lobes pitted. We had options in, I could have had his original cams re-welded and hard-faced. It was actually quicker for time and I think a better deal getting a new billet uh, camshaft for these. Still a stock profile, no changes there. Um, timing is slightly different based on the grind uh, as far as my dial gauge settings, but my profile, my lift and duration specs are all the same. Okay, so I got my new cam. I am just gonna lubricate all of my journals. Slide it in. So I'm just putting all of my shims into my base set right now. No keyway because all I want to do get my chain depth correct you should notice I didn't even hook up the timing chain yet so I'm just going to screw everything together that way I can check my end float which feels good and I can check my chain depth off my intermediate shaft before I continue on just oiling my bearing surfaces Just want to make sure this o-ring is lubed up i lube it before i put it on so it doesn't bind these have a habit if they stick here they'll twist and they'll cause them to fail early so i always lubricate the whole thing slide it on make sure it's relaxed then put my gasket on so i just cleaned the excess oil from putting my camshaft in from my gasket surface 
That's really one of the biggest keys to having a successful seal is no fluids on that surface. So the number I'm looking for is 106.52, number I measured was 106.48, uh, shims come in 0.5 of a millimeter change and we are 0.05 of a millimeter, it's flopping between 0.5 so I'm pretty happy with that. Just going to move on, check the other side. So the number we are looking for here is 51.72, I'm measuring 50.65, check it one more time in a different spot. Yep, 50.7, so we actually need to pull a shim out. There we go. Negative point zero four, which if we pull it forward. Negative point zero and negative point two three, push it back. Zero point zero oh, right on zero zero now. Zero as in what added together? Nothing. All I did was I measured to the gear and I kept measured the bar and the gear at the same time. So that means our chain is within 0 0.01 of a millimeter of the drive chain on the intermediate shaft. So we're good. had it where you've magically timed it yes so we've got our rebuilt rocker arm which has been rebushed everything cleaned lubed uh, rocker arms that we've polished right here our pivot arm we've installed the updated rubber o-rings and we're just going to install the intake on cylinder one and cylinder four so i can set my valve timing then once my valve timing's done i'll close up all the front put my tensioners in and once I'm done there, I'll come along and put the rest of the rockers in. So I'm just going to lube my rocker feet and a little bit on the cam lobe with webcam stuff because this is a webcam. Okay, setting my valve clearance on number one. So we can put our Z-block on and put our timing uh, dial gauge in and set our timing. I won't be able to set the valve clearance on number four because right now it's gonna be on the camshaft load. 
plus. Nice. Okay. So I have number one, I've set my timing. Uh, the timing specs for this set of key amps is 1.9 to 2.2 uh, millimeters. So my target is usually right in the middle. On this particular one, it would be 2.05. I landed at 2.02. .02. So that means I'm going to aim for that same target on the other side. So I'm going to move my Z block. I've already talked this side, rotated it twice, double checked it, and we'll set it on that side. Then I can go ahead and put all the rest of my rockers in. Just set the valve clearance at 0.1 of a millimeter on cylinder four. So there's one millimeter, two millimeters, 0 0.02. And if I look at my crank, right now that cam is advanced. We can see it's running actually, it looks like about six degrees advanced based on where it is. So pull the pin and reset it. So I've got my crank, Z1, we're at the same timing spec, I'm going to tighten it up, rotate it around, see what it looks like. Two millimeters which is 0 0.02 of a millimeter difference from bank to bank I can live with that and we'll button it up there everything's tightened I can go ahead put the rest of my rockers in put my new updated chain tensioners on and move on with assembly so on this engine we are replacing the old uh, manual hydraulic tensioners to pressure fed tensioner kit you buy the kit comes with nuts washers hoses covers everything you need to do the job uh, the other tension is over in the box. So I've just taken it out. So I'm going to go, you always want to pull your dummy tensioner when there is no load on the valve. So otherwise the cam can spin and if you're unlucky, it can actually jump a tooth. So I just put a finger up there and pull that. And then we're ready to put our chain tensioner in and button it up. So once the tension is in, I'm going to hold some pressure up. Pull my grenade pin, and that tensioner spring pressure is going to push it up.
Okay, so we have finished coating all of our tinware. I had to make some repairs to uh, this one and had a couple of modifications. Somebody had cut the engine bracket here, so I welded this back together. Uh, repaired the damage, like this was all broken off. One of the nuts had fallen out, so I welded on a new nut. Tack welded where the tin was broken so it'll all attach correctly. And then this has all been Cerakoted. Valve covers, uh, this customer asked for black. Uh, we're going to do a detail of white on the Porsche. So I got to mask this off next and just respray the Porsche section. Uh, bottom covers have been Cerakoted. And the top cover here... We affected a couple of repairs, also modified for our new pressure-fed chain tensioners. So cut that out once again, Cerakoted. Repairing the tin is really important. Always want to make sure you go through and look for missing nuts, cracks, breaks, because it's very important to the way the engine cools. So one last uh, Cerakote project that we have is Cerakote Clear on the fans. So I've already blasted the actual fan. I've still got to do the housing. Uh, it's some important stuff that I'll mention when I show you the housing where you don't want Cerakote. Uh, but what we're going to do with these ones is we're going to clear coat these. That way they'll look like this 25, 30 years from now. So with all of our covers uh, Cerakoted now, I can go ahead and install my, my cam box covers. Uh, also going to perform our TSP for the case leak. So I'm going to uh, seal this section up and this section up here. Go ahead and put my oil cooler back on and then this is pretty much going to wrap up the long block on this engine.